Hi everybody, Grandad here. What am I up to today? Well today I'm going to look at another character that lives here in, uh, live, or did live here in Shropshire many years ago. Um, and he was an eccentric uh, aristocrat I suppose you'd say. Certainly a very wealthy man at the beginning. And his name was Jack Mitten. Also known as Mad Jack. Because of the antics he got up to. Gave him a reputation for being a bit of a crazy man. Although I don't think he was exactly crazy. He certainly had some eccentric ways about him. And uh, I think maybe he had suffered with uh, a sort of a mental illness. Which I'll get on to a bit later on. But Mad Jack lived here in Shropshire uh, around about the 1800s um, and uh, as I say he was uh, a wealthy son of a wealthy uh, person in Shropshire here. He lived in a place called Holston which is just outside uh, Street here where I live and I've got some pictures here. This is a picture of what his house, Holston Hall, might have looked like. That's from a painting. I believe that's uh, a picture of the house. Now today, this house is used as a, still exists, and it's used as a vet wedding venue. And I believe that this might well be a picture of it. It's changed a bit since that first picture, but uh, it's not any. It's quite a long way off the main road, so it's not easy to get to see Holston Hall. But it's not far from where I live, and uh, Mad Jack was quite a character. Um, in his younger days, he he, uh, he inherited from his father in his will a tremendous fortune, about twenty million pounds, I believe, in total. But because of his uh, wasteful and <laughs> various antics that he got up to, he uh, somehow lost all his money. And uh, sadly, eventually he uh, became bankrupt and uh, lost all his money. And he, he ended up in a debtor's prison and died around the age of, uh, in his early 50s, I believe. I don't think he was that old, really. But... Uh, his wasteful ways. He, he used to drink gallons of, uh, no, gallons, bottles of port. He was re renowned for drinking a, half a dozen or so bottles of port a day. But uh, he was a strange character and uh, I think he may have been suffering with uh, a bipolar or some sort of thing. Uh, I myself uh, suffer with similar similar problems. I take medication for that. Um, but uh, when you when you've got this bipolar disorder it sort of makes you do crazy things. Now, had you been a commoner, you would have undoubtedly ended up in a mental hospital, you know, because of his crazy ways and the things he did. But because he was an aristocrat, they just said, oh, he's eccentric, and therefore uh, they didn't really worry about the things he got up to, and they just passed it off as a young man being exuberant and, uh, you know, carrying on like he did. But he really did some crazy things. I mean, one of the things he would do because he liked hunting and fishing, and as, as all aristocrats do. And uh, he would uh, get up in the middle of the night in his nightshirt and go out shooting ducks, especially in the winter in the snow. And he'd crawl about uh, in the in the snow uh, hunting ducks. And then he'd, he'd go back home after he'd got too cold or stared any longer. And he'd go back to bed, and then uh, a bit later on he'd get up again and he'd go out shooting again. And uh, he did all sorts of very strange things. I mean, he'd have parties, lavish parties at his house, and uh, he'd uh, do all sorts of uh, manner of tricking people. He, he was a sort of a... he didn't really do anybody any harm. I mean, he never actually killed anybody or did anything any really damage, but he used to put the wind up people. He used to scare them a little bit. Uh, I mean, one day he uh, apparently decided after his guests left uh, on their way home from his from his house at a big party he'd had, he would dress up as a highwayman and attack them on the road, shooting above their heads and demanding money and chasing them all the way home. Uh, it, 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 a bit of like devilment really, but he got into all sorts of scrapes and when he was out in his carriage he would uh, quite often uh, just 
get it into his head that he wanted to try something silly and he would gallop off down the road in, the, in his gig and run it into rabbit holes and anything, obstacles along the way, just to see if it would turn over, you know, just just for a laugh really. But, and, I mean, I, I don't know how he managed not to hurt himself, but he always seemed to recover from these things. And apparently one day when he was having a party um, and he invited a lot of guests along, he actually came into the room riding on a bear. He, he was very fond of animals and he, he did a lot with... Uh, animals he had lots of hunting dogs and <laughs> strangely enough he used to dress them up he used to put uh, costumes on them and dress these dogs up and his favorite dog he used to keep in the house as well as a horse there was a horse that he used to have come into the house as well uh, at Alston and uh, he'd feed these animals all sorts of strange food I mean his dog was felled on the best steak that you could buy and, and bottles of champagne I mean <laughs> He really was crazy. I mean, he did some crazy things. Now, I've got a few photographs here which show some of the pictures uh, that people have printed about uh, Mad Jack um, and uh, some things that people said about him. If you just let me get these pictures up, I might be able to show you some pictures. This is a picture of uh, Jack actually uh, chasing his uh, house guests dressed as a highwayman and shooting at them and uh, playing a trick on them but uh, I don't think he did them any harm but he certainly scared them after death and this is another another thing he did when he got uh, he was suffering with a, a bout of hiccups and somewhere he heard that uh, if you had a fright you could get rid of cure hiccups and what he actually did was set fire to his nightshirt and there he is on flames uh, trying to cure hiccups and apparently it worked I don't know <laughs> certainly the shock would uh, but uh, he seemed to survive that, I don't know, it looks as if he would have burnt himself if he did such a thing. But that illustration there shows when he tried to cure himself of hiccups. And this is a picture of him uh, going along in his gig with his passengers and, and riding full length at a, at a gate. Now apparently uh, in those days they had turnpike gates at every so far along the road because you had to pay for roads in a toll. And so there was these turnpike gates and apparently he was going along there with a, with his gig one day and um, he decided to see what would happen if he tried to jump the gate with it, with his horse and carriage. And there he is trying to, trying to go charging at the gate. Of course it all ended in disaster. But apparently he didn't get hurt. And there he is as I say, he used to go duck hunting at night in his nightshirt, and it was quite common for, to see him around in, in strange, either stripped naked doing things or, or in strange garb. And uh, as I say, he did crazy things, but people just thought he was eccentric. Now, this is a picture of him, and it's uh, not a very good picture. It's a, a likeness that they used to do in those days. Oh, it's gone. Let's just get that back. Get that back. Not the one. Uh, and this is a little likeness that may well be very similar to how he might have looked. Those other prints and photographs aren't really photographs at all. They, they didn't have photographs in those days, but they did these portraits. And this is apparently roughly what he looked like. Now, I'm, I'm quite interested in Mad Jack Mitten because uh, when we hit, uh, had some property in Shrewsbury uh, that actually belonged to Mad Jack, obviously over the years when he became... Uh, using up his money he had to sell property to try and keep going uh, because his, his gravitance was uh, tremendous I mean he, he had hundreds of pairs of shoes uh, hundreds of pairs of boots and uh, you know spent all his money wildly and, and doing all sorts of crazy things and he would gamble I mean he would gamble away all his money and at one time he got it into his head that he wanted to be a member of parliament and to that end he actually uh, uh, stood for a uh, member of parliament and uh, in order to secure his his position in Parliament, he actually paid people. He paid them ten pounds, which was quite a lot of money in those days. Uh, ten pounds to to go and vote for him, so that he could get it to be a member of Parliament. Uh, um, I mean, they they say that he spent a million pounds in order to to get into the House of Commons and and to be a, a an MP. But when he actually and he did win, he he became an MP, um, and. Uh, he managed to get in there, but apparently he only ever attended the Parliament once, and he was so bored with it after a few minutes that he walked out and he never went back. So his career as a politician didn't last very long. And this was a, a sort of a sign of his, uh, his, his character and his, his, his madness, if you like. He, he would get it into his head that he wanted to do things, and uh, 
he would just, you know, he wouldn't care how much money he spent because he, he, he thought his money would last forever, he'd be endless. But to that, that end, I mean, he had to sell off a lot of his property. And this is really how I, I get to know a little bit about uh, Mad Jack, because <coughs> the property that my family owned <coughs> at one time, <coughs> excuse me for coughing here, um, belonged to uh, part of Mitten Estate. And... Uh, when we bought that property, we got a lot of deeds and documents and indentures and all that sort of thing with that property. Now, when it come to be, um, we had to sell that property, it was actually compulsory purchased from my family to build a big housing estate for uh, people. And in those days, uh, they had a thing, well, they still got it probably, compulsory purchase. Now, my father didn't want to sell up, so uh, he, it was compulsory purchased off him and he didn't get a lot of money for what the, the land he sold for this housing estate. But anyway... That's by the by. Um, but he said that he wouldn't give up the documents. He'd still keep hold of the documents. But it went through and the sale went through and the land was taken. But what the interesting thing about it is, I've still got those documents and he passed them on to me. Now I'm just going to bring you over with the camera and I'll show you these documents. And you'll see, I'll try and explain as we go what these documents are. Now I don't want to shake this too much, but I'll just bring you over here and I'll show you these documents. Now the first one I want to draw your attention to, the line on the bed here, because they're quite big. It's a huge document, and it's actually the will of, of John Mitten's father. I think his name was John as well. And uh, this is his last will and testament. And when you go through this uh, document, you can actually see this uh, seals on the bottom here. And it's signed John Mitten. Now that's almost certainly his father, not John Mitten... Mad Jack, and this is his father. Let's move that bit of nonsense out of the way. Um, so we've got a signature there, which may well be his father, father's signature on this document, because it's the last will and testament of a mitten. And this is dated, I can't quite remember the date of this now, and if I can see it if I look, I think it's 17 something, 17. If I remember when I turn it over, might have it. In. Yes, this is 1833. So uh, it's certainly not John's, uh, Jack Mitten's uh, will, because uh, as I say, he died a bankrupt, so he wouldn't have anything, any, anything to leave. But these other documents I've got here, these are indentures for sale of property, and I've got a whole heap of them. But these two I've, I've dragged out. Um, this one on top, wait a minute, I might have got this mixed up. This might be the, this might be the will. This, no, this, I think this one is the will. And there's pages and pages of information on the will. And this one is dated, uh, which I thought is dated uh, 17, 1752. So I think that's the will. I made a mistake there. I think that other document was, was a document for sale of land by John Mitten. So that might well be his signature there, but on these are almost certainly uh, documents with John Mitten's or Mad Jack's signature on. And if I bring you in close enough so you can see, there it says a seal and a signature, John Mitten. And then the one underneath, move that out of the way, there's another one, an indenture for sale of property and again on the bottom here there's various people witnessing it but there very clearly you can see John Mitten now that I believe is Mad Jack's signature I'll just bring you back now so that's how it comes about that I've got an interest in Mad Jack because I, my family bought further on down the line. We didn't buy it directly from him. We bought it from other people who bought it from him. And these were the documents that came with the property. And my father held on to them after the property was compulsory purchased to, uh, to build a big housing estate. And uh, I suppose people have play, need, need places to live and that was the land that was available, so they took it. But anyway, that's another story for another day perhaps. But that's the story of Mad Jack, and now I have an association with him. And he lives quite close from here. I live in Oswestry now, in Shropshire. 
and uh, Halston Hall is actually closer to Whittington and Whittington is very close to uh, where I live in Oswestry and it's within uh, sort of eight miles, eight to ten miles away from here and so uh, I go past there occasionally when we're heading off to going in that direction and that's uh, interesting to see but you can't see Halston Hall from the main road you have to drive up the drive and it's a private drive so I wouldn't be able to go up there to show you actually the house but I believe those photographs I showed you give you a good idea of what it was like but anyway that's my little story about Mad Jack I hope you enjoyed it <laughs> I certainly get a lot of pleasure out of uh, you know, knowing that uh, I've got something that belonged to this character in Shropshire that's well known. I mean, there's lots of other places in Shropshire that's got uh, Mad Jack. There's actually a public house not far from Holston Hall where he lives, it's, which is called Mad Jack's uh, uh, Hotel and Pub. And uh, there's uh, also an association in Shrewsbury where, at Atcham where they have a, a big public house which is called the Mitten of Mermaid. And it's uh, something to do with Mad Jack. I don't really quite know what the connection is there, so I won't say too much about it, but certainly the name uh, is probably something to do with that. But anyway, that's my little story about Mad Jack, and I hope you enjoyed it. So until next time, bye-bye now. Bye.